What we're going to be looking at here is the disposition here of property, plant, and equipment, and those are long-term assets here. And a company may retire plant assets voluntarily or dispose of them by, uh, well, we've got four ways here we can look at here. We have the sale of an asset here, the exchange of one asset for another asset, like a trade-in here, uh, and or an exchange change of assets between companies here or an involuntary conversion that's where the property would be destroyed or it could be condemned here by uh, like the, a particular state to put in a new highway so you'd have to give up the property here or sell it to the state or you could scrap or abandon the property here. In our example is going to be specifically looking here at an involuntary conversion here where the we're going to have a building here and it's going to be destroyed by fire and we have to account for that. Now regardless of the type of disposal depreciation must be taken up to the date here of the disposition of the property. Then you remove all the accounts related to the retired asset here and generally the book value of the asset does not equal its disposal value here. As a result a gain or loss results. The reason is that depreciation is an estimate here of the cost allocation and not its valuation here. Uh, the gain or loss is really a correction of net income for the years which the asset was used here. And our, again, our example is going to be for an involuntary conversion and an involuntary conversion be uh, such as a fire, flood, theft, or condemnation of the property. Now you report the difference between the amount recovered here, if any, and the asset's book value as a gain or loss. You may be reported as an extraordinary item on the income statement. So let's go and look at our example here. Now on 1231X1 Corporation A has a building recorded on the, on the books as follows here. So the building, the original cost was $2,600,000 here. Accumulated depreciation was 720000 So the difference here would be our, the book value at $1,880,000. And for our example here, it's gonna, it was depreciated here at $144,000 per year on a straight line basis. Now, here's where we're going to have our involuntary conversion. A fire completely destroys the building here on 831 here of X2 the following year here, August, the end of, on the end of August here of the following year here. Our, our data here was as of the end of uh, year X1 here. And we have the uh, destruction of the fire here eight months later here, year X2. Now the insurance settlement was for $1,260,000. That was received for the casualty loss here on the fire of the building. And we're going to look at it as it received immediately here. And we're going to do our recordings here. Let's just say as of the date here of the uh, uh, involuntary conversion here of the fire, 831X2. So the first thing we'd have, and then I've got them noted here if it's on a balance sheet, would be the cash from the insurance settlement here and that was the cash we received here one million two hundred sixty thousand dollars here and now we come down to our building here and uh, remember this has to be removed off the books here because we have lost that building here through the fire here so what we would do is we had it sitting on the books here at two million six hundred thousand dollars and that was the cost of the building so we would credit that out here and uh, for two million six hundred thousand dollars remove it off the books then we come down to our accumulated depreciation remember the depreciation account here the accumulated depreciation and there's a contract account here to our building account and that reduces our building account here so uh, we, we got to look at the calculate the total amount through the disposal or when this building was destroyed here so what we would do we re, we had seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars sitting here as of the beginning of the year here but we have to calculate the amount here that we would have for up to the uh, time here of the fire of 831 x2 and we've done that here we have the hundred and forty four thousand dollars per year here times eight months here gives us ninety six thousand dollars so now we can calculate our total depreciation here for the year just be the sum amount here of the beginning amount plus the amount of depreciation here for the year and that would be a total amount here of eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars and we'd be removing that off our books here now uh, 
what we have here is we also have to recognize our depreciation expense here for the year here, 1-1 one, one, uh, through 831 here. And we would, on our income statement here, we would be debiting or increasing our in depreciation expense here for $96,000. So what we've done here is we've removed the building off the books here and we've recognized our depreciation expense here for the year here. But we also have to calculate a loss. In this case, it's going to be a loss on the disposal or the uh, loss of this building here. And it could have been a gain as well, but we're, in this case, we're going to be looking at a loss here. So to calculate our loss, we take our building cost here, $2,600,000, less the accumulated depreciation. Now, this is the accumulated depreciation up to the time here of the fire here and that was eight hundred and sixteen thousand uh, dollars subtracting that from our cost gives us a book value of one million seven hundred eighty four thousand dollars now the cash received here was one million two hundred sixty thousand dollars that's what we received here from the insurance company for the loss of that building so the difference here uh, book value here is greater than the cash received. So in this case, we're going to have a loss here. The difference between those two, $524,000. So what we would do on our income statement here, again, we have to recognize this loss here. Debit our loss amount here for $524,000. So what we've done here with this involuntary conversion here, we have received our cash payment here. So we had to uh, recognize our cash payment. And then again, we had to remove our building off the the books here for both the building account here and accumulated depreciation. And then, of course, we recognize our depreciation expense here for the year and also the loss here on this building. So this is a typical example here of how you would handle uh, involuntary conversion here. And it can come in many shapes or forms, but this is just a basic example here and how you'd recognize a loss here on the, this involuntary conversion.